If you clicked on this video, there's a good chance you've seen this video made by Vox. Temporary loss of information. Tom York, perhaps one of the most critically acclaimed musicians of his generation, can't seem to play four quarter notes. You see, the reason for all this is that this song draws its power from a musical illusion, my car. In this video, Vox and Warren Lane make the argument that this piano part should actually be felt like this. Vox's music journalism department is pretty hit or miss. They made some videos that I've really liked and some videos that are basically just pure, straight up misinformation. You gotta look at the chords. It's all in the chords. Their video talking about the secret rhythm behind Radiohead's videotape is somewhere in between. The best piece of evidence that they have for this, which is barely brought up in the video, is this early live recording of the song. In this clip from about four months before the song was released, the band plays a significantly different arrangement, and in order to really understand what's going on here, we've got to transcribe the tune. When I'm at the days, Alright, so far this is very rhythmically straightforward and pretty similar to the recorded version. My metronome tap is picking up 74 beats per minute, so I'm going to put it at that. Alright, now we've got this like syncopated cross-stick hi-hat rhythm thing going on. It's pretty cool. Looks like this. So now we're drifting pretty significantly from the album arrangement. We now have the kick drum reinforcing the piano, making the song a lot heavier than the recording arrangement does. Alright, so the high end has changed now to just laying out 16th notes instead of matching the snare drum. The groove is starting to, you know, build up. Oh shit, okay, so the snare drum has changed now to playing a backbeat, making this like a typical rock group. But wait a minute. There's some differences between what I'm hearing and what's on the page. That's just a typical rock groove, so why does it look so weird? That's because at this moment, the band pulls off the trick that they've been hiding from the audience this entire time. The piano is in fact anticipating the beat, not playing along with it. So the first change we need to make is to the tempo. I've been notating everything at 74 beats per minute, but this new clear inclusion of a backbeat means that it should be double that with all the rhythms also doubled in length. So this is much closer, but there's still something wrong here. The backbeat is felt on beat two, but it's currently notated on the end of two. This means everything needs to be moved up an eighth note. Now you can correctly visualize what you're hearing. So that settles it, right? The Vox version was correct, and I mean, I just proved it. Well, not exactly. So that analysis proved just how significant context is in musical notation. When I was transcribing the front half of that tune, I was using an incorrect method. However, it seemed perfectly fine because there was no context given that made it incorrect. Remember how I said the arrangement from that live version was different from the studio recording? 
Well, let's look into what makes them different. So instead of that snare hi-hat rhythm being the first percussion to enter, we have this part. No other percussion enters until three minutes into the song when this hi-hat rhythm comes in. This is shortly followed by this cross stick rhythm. And that's it. So my question is, why do these recordings of the same song sound so different? Tom York shares some insights into the recording process of this tune across two interviews. The first of which was with New Musical Express. It was going to be like a fast pulse, like a four on the floor thing, and everything was going to be built from that. We threw all this stuff at it, but then a couple of months later, Johnny and Nigel Godrich had stripped it back. He clarified in an interview with Mojo Magazine, they'd stripped all the nonsense away that I'd been piling onto it, and what was left was this quite pure sentiment. This is where my thought process becomes slightly philosophical. Is there any reason to notate the song at 154 beats per minute with the piano being syncopated if that rock groove never enters in the song? Yeah, you could notate the entire song like that, or you could write it down as the piano playing quarter notes and instead interpret the percussion as syncopated and have a much easier time communicating the song to others. I mean, what's the point of music notation? Some would argue that it's to keep an archive of music, but that's just no longer true with it being so easy to make a recording that'll be around forever. Instead, music notation is more commonly used today as a way to communicate ideas to other musicians. So would the song be easier to communicate like this? Or this? The second one. I mean, definitely the second one. So while that early version of the song definitely had some interesting things going on under the hood, that was ultimately removed from the studio version with the band opting to simplify the track. The guy that Vox interviewed has a video on his channel that goes much more in depth on this than Vox did. He acknowledges that this hidden secret is so scarcely present on the recorded version that it's arguable that it isn't on there at all, but says this. To me, the band's perspective, how they hear the song, is very, very important. Because how you hear the song, how you have it envisioned in your mind, is what you're going to project. It's crazy. I mean, it's not like an egotistical thing, but like musicians, when they play, one, one of the reasons we play is because we enjoy the sound that's like that's coming out of our fingers and, and from our voices. While I understand his perspective on this, I ultimately disagree. Music isn't meant to be a way to directly transmit information to others. It's meant to be consumed and interpreted. All of my most memorable relationships with songs stem from this unique sense of self-application. There are so many songs that I cherish in a way that the original songwriters never intended, and that's why I love music. To close this out, two of my favorite musicians put this perfectly in one of my favorite interviews they ever did. What's it about? It's about, well, it's like a... Uh, we can't answer these questions. The album is, what yeah. You can't answer We can't the answer album. them. No, because you see... Is it fast? Is it slow? Here's is it the upbeat? Problem. The whole point of, of making of making records, and especially, you know, records that have no, no visual information to go along with them, no video, no nothing like that, right. is that people can use their imaginations when they listen to it and they can interpret it how they want, they can experience the music in a way they want. If we start, you know, dishing out in the interpretation or meanings for people, then then it's, it has, you know, the whole reason for it existing is... is That's that. fascism. So those are my thoughts on the hidden rhythm behind Radiohead's videotape. Um, big shout out to Warren Lane for laying the foundation for this discussion. I have his video, as well as all of my other sources, links right below that like button. Um, if you have any thoughts on the video, make sure you leave it in the comments below. As always, this has been my thoughts on the hidden secret behind Radiohead's videotape. I'll be back soon with another video.